Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the fuel pump on a all-wheel drive vehicle. This applies to Volvo 850s, S70s, V70s, primarily built from 1996 in some countries, 1997 through 2000. If it's an all-wheel drive P80 car, this is the video for you. I did not cut the floor open in this video. I wanted to show you how to do it without cutting the floor open. I lowered the fuel tank, lowered some of the suspension, didn't remove the fuel tank, but pried the fuel tank down enough to get the fuel sending unit out. I would strongly encourage you to use a quality fuel pump. You do not want to be in here with a piece of crap that will fail quickly. Also, look very close at the fuel pump uh, sending unit that you have. There have been defective ones. Make sure you test it and look as close to the unit as you can to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, one guy had a newer fuel pump in his tank and the tube that went into the plastic housing was dislodged just a little bit, allowing the seal to hang out of it and he was uh, running out of gas at a half a tank. You know, stuff like that is just unacceptable for craftsmanship quality of parts but it happens test the sending unit the pump before you install it or you may be going back in there it's a kind of a pain in the butt job there is a couple of links in the comment section one showing you the classic symptoms of a fuel pump failing the fuel pump that i just replaced uh, had not failed it probably had been replaced about 15 years ago it's having some kind of electronic ETM problem. That's a whole nother story for another day. I'll try to deal with that later. Uh, however, if you got a failed fuel pump, you best to test it by activating the pump, checking the pressure at the rail, and proceeding from there. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Here we are with Chris's 99 V70R. We're about to do a fuel pump. Uh, we're going to start off by jacking up the car, putting jack stands under here. Jack the vehicle up and put the jack stand under the frame of the car, right inside the plastic rocker panel. You got the support there. Give yourself room to get the bolts out back there. And that's where you need to put your jack stands, somewhere along in this area, both sides. If you're using this kind of jack stand, you can support it on the frame of the vehicle like that. Just leave yourself room to get these bolts out, 17 millimeter, 18 millimeter. Next, we're gonna remove this plastic panel, a couple 10 millimeter nuts, get this plastic panel down off the bottom of the car. Took the bolt, 18 millimeter, out of this viscous coupling front end of that. Next, we're going to come over here, take these two bolts out, and the bolt out of here, and the bolt out of there. So we're going to take these four out. The goal is to have this come down, this come down, with that just hang down so we can take the tank loose, 12 millimeter there, hang the tank down. So we're going to do that both sides so it'll sag down a little bit. So we got two 17s here, one 17 here, that 18 there. I'm going to go do the other side, then it'll really be hanging. And then we're going to take the tank loose and reach up here and, and get the cap off, follow the wires back and unplug them. So let me get the other side, those four bolts loose on the other side. then undo the tank then we're going to pry the tank down and put a block of wood in there to keep the tank down far enough to get the cap off this screw had some rust on it the other side really didn't but the threads go over top 
So what we got to be careful not to do is to put so much force on the bolt that you break the bolt. So I sprayed the bottom side with PP Blaster, squirt over the top, hit the threads with PP Blaster, broke it loose, tighten it back up, wound it down a little bit, tighten it back up. You got to work that bolt out so hopefully you don't break it. You break this bolt, you got a problem. So don't do that. Take it down three spins, turn it up one, take it down five spins, take it up one, work that bolt out. Don't break it. Be probably the last thing you do to this car. Well, guess what I did? Broke the bolt. However, I left myself enough room. So we're gonna either heat that up or brush off the top, crank that in with some vice grips and work that bolt out. I probably got another one in the back of my car, but that's not good. Now, as you can see, looks like I have enough room possibly to get those lines off and get that cap off. I'm gonna pry it down on the tank just a little bit, put a block of wood up there to keep it down far enough for me, but it's almost down far enough now so I can put my tool on there, my fuel removal tool, my cap removal tool, and undo those lines. Those lines, they have a release part of them. You put something under those lines, pull them in, and they will lift off. If you have a small screwdriver with a little bend in it, but this tool right here is like perfect. I've used this before to get those fuel lines loose, but this hook or a hooked uh, flat tip screwdriver is better. Small hooked flat tip screwdriver. I wiggled it under there, got it under that clip, and just massaged that line right off. I'm going to try to film myself doing the, the next one. I don't know if I could do it past my hand, but you just work that thing under there, under that plastic clip, and just massage that plastic clip up. And once you get that clip coming up, that line comes right up off of there, because that is the fuel release on the line. Let me get it started and then come back to the filming it. But that other one was so easy because I had so much visibility to it. I don't have the visibility to this next one, but let me get it started and come back to it. I got into there, it started coming off, so here I am trying to film it again. Get that thing under there. And... Oh, I took the other one off again. That one came off a lot easier. Do 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 do. It's always one trying to be difficult. Popped off. So now we got both fuel lines off. Let me go get the fuel cap removal tool. Here's a clamp on here. I'm not sure why. It may be easier to take that clamp off before you start taking the cap off. So I'm gonna take that clamp loose. I'm gonna take the cap off, catch whatever fuel I need to in the drip pan. Then I'm gonna follow the wire, get that wire loose. I took this two by four Pried it up in the corner of that tank and I walked it over on the ground. So this two by four, I don't know, foot and a half, two feet, <coughs> got it wedged up in there to wedge the tank down so I can have access to get these lines and stuff loose. I'm try to break nothing, just wedge it down a little bit. Now here's the tool to get the fuel tank cap off. 
you could use this or you could use one of those adjustable jaw oil filter wrenches or something like that if you want to make it easy get this it's a little high profile so that other tool may actually be a little better this is made for taking fuel tank caps off so you could use one of these pliers maybe to get that off but if you got one of these maybe better and you can even get it at Harbor Freight. Since your fuel tank wasn't leaking, you can assume this cap was on properly. So you may want to mark the cap alignment so when you screw this thing back on, you get it tight enough. Sometimes people don't get this thing tight enough, then it leaks and they're in here tightening that back up. So we're going to mark it and then we're going to remove it, unplug the lines, get that stuff straight back through there. I broke it loose, that's why you see it leaking now. Another thing you should know that these fuel caps, they have numbers on them. Five, six, seven, eight. And so you could actually set that up so that you know five was over here. Write a number five over here. Make a note of it somehow so you'll know how tight that cap was. So let me go ahead and finish taking this cap off and then get our lines run. As you can see, the all-wheel drive vehicle is not as forgiving with fuel coming out of there as the front-wheel drive cars are because the cap's on the top. So you're going to lose some gas, catch it, be prepared to slide another one under there and catch some more. And Until you get the job done, you can pour it back in the tank after you filter it. But you take the floor out of the back of the car the rear part just lifts up and channels out. The part in front of that has two 10 millimeter screws on both sides. Two on that side, two on that side. If you got the seats, work around that stuff, pull all that up. Then you pull the cap lid off. 10 millimeter screws, five of them. Then you'll see access to your wiring. There's the new fuel pump unit. You got these four connectors so you got to unplug these four connectors up here this one this one and this one to uh, plug all this stuff in because you got to drag all of this down through there now before you pull all this down through there you want to tie some kind of string or wire on it so when you pull this down through that way you can pull it back up with all this connector stuff so what I'm going to do is put my tie through these wires on the end of this connector and drag all that stuff through there and then pull all this stuff up through here. So here's the sending unit harness. This white connector and that black connector hooks onto this wire. This wire stays here. The other two plugs went in there. So we're going to pull this wire down through there. Put my feed wire on these three plugs and drag it down through the hole. Before you put a fuel pump in the tank you want to test it. The red and black wire coming out of here should be the power. So the red is power, the black is ground. I'm hooking up my jump box red, black. I cut this off of an old fuel pump out of the junkyard. So I keep that in my jump box storage thing. There's another plug I got in that I could plug stuff into. So I'm going to plug this into my jump box, see if my fuel pump works. Before I put it in the tank, you don't want to be taking stuff out of the tank after, right after you put it in there. All because it's new don't mean it works. Got it on, and the pump is working. Kind of a loud pump, but it is what it is. Let this loose. It should go off, let it go, it goes off. So we believe the pump's working, we're gonna go ahead and install it. Our line would not pull through because the last person that put this in here, they somehow ran the wires, twisted them around under the pressure regulator. So we had to pull a wheel so we can pry the tank down a little bit reach up in here and feed the wires through with my hand this way so we're tangled and something up here somebody's been up here 
looks like fixing fuel lines or something. So they got this all twisted up under here somehow. So we're gonna have to figure out how to feed the line through, feed a feeder line through, and then pull the wires up through there. Let us work on this for a couple more minutes and come back to you. Get the wire pulled down through here. And now you gotta lift this out of here and pry the tank down far enough to get it out. But you can maneuver it in by wiggling it around and getting out. Just maneuver it out there past the floor. Handle it. Don't call me whining. It was actually a two people job. I pried the tank down while he wiggled the sending unit out. So that's the old pump sending unit, all that stuff. Now before you pull, push the next one in there, make sure everything looks like it's assembled good. This will sit in here like this. You see it swings toward the center of the car. Put you a new gasket on there. Make sure when you put it in there and secure it, the lines are horizontal to each other. And this sits on the bottom of the tank. So you may need somebody to pry it down while you maneuver this in there or pry you a piece of wood in there to get it pried down some. Work that in there. Thread the wire through the cap. Make sure you don't get your fuel lines jacked up and continue to put that in there. That's almost perfect. I pulled the unit down toward the ground where the jack stand is so I could get the seal to fall in around the blind side and then I used the tool that I used to take the lines loose. I tucked the rest of the seal in then as I pushed and wiggled it it popped in. So the inner seal is in, the outer seal is out. Fill that all the way around. Make sure then thread your cap through the wire, put your fuel lines through the cap, and secure your cap on. Then secure that clamp on. And then we're gonna feed the wire back up through where it belongs. Some people lubricate the seal so it pops in that tank nice and smooth, but I'm also gonna recommend you lubricate the inside of this cap with Vaseline or something. So when you get close to tightening, it's not grabbing the top metal on the sending unit and twisting it. It'll glide and let this tighten all the way down where you need it to. So Mark, we're waiting for number five to come around. I screwed this all down by hand. This thing wiggled a little bit while I was going in and out, but you wanna make sure that it's horizontal before you tighten it all the way down. If it's not, Use a screwdriver or something, get in there and turn this thing a little bit so that it's where you want it to be. Uh, your wires at the lowest point, these lines up and uh, horizontal. I tightened it down. I got it lined up where it was marked. Uh, I had to put a small crowbar or a large screwdriver in there to stop this from turning, but it didn't try much since I lubricated the inside of the cap. So. You can see the marks where that was down near the bottom and got it all lined up. Ready to put my ring back on here, tighten that down, then plug my lines back in, uh, raise the tank, put some fuel in it to leak check it before I bolt everything up. Next you want to go ahead and pull that cap off, grab your line, put your line down over there. Gently slide it in, right over it till you hear it click. That's it. Should have leak proof connection. Tighten this clamp down, run your wire up to your floor. So you could take the old harness, we use a electrical wire, fed it down, pulled the cable through, taped it up so none of them get hung up on anything. Now we're gonna take that tape loose. Here's a clip right here on top of the tank. You clip your wire harness in that. A fuel line's clipped in it. A couple things right there. We are about to strap this thing back up. So we got the floor jack, put a two by four there, lifted the tank up, 
getting ready to drive the bolt in. Then we'll go over the other side. We broke that bolt over there, so we'll, I'm going to try to put a nut on it. Hopefully there's enough of the bolt there that I could put a nut on it. If not, we'll have to machine that out and put a new bolt in it. This bracket that this bolt goes through has two side tabs. We're going to get a U-bolt and put it up around that bracket and U-bolt this side up. Then we put the 2x4 on the jack jacked up the viscous coupling and put that 18 in there then we put the jack there jack this up and it pulled all this stuff up so I'm gonna put the 18 in there and the 317s then we're gonna do that on the other side and then we're gonna plug in the pump and put some gas in the tank and we should be done all the connections are made we're gonna put all the wires back in this little sleeve put that in place Put this on, we got the wheel on, we got the splash cars on, we added some gas, it's not leaking, we think we're good to go. We're going to fire this thing up, take it for a test drive. Fire it right up, but it's putting.